When exploring the wrecks of Iron Bottom Sound, the Ballard and Petrel expeditions made an interesting discovery. The wrecks of Hiei and Kirishima, two Congo-class ships, were incredibly similar, and not because they were sister ships. Both vessels broke in two. Both ships capsized on their way down. And while the breaks aren't identical, far from it, it does mean there's only one way to be sure, which is which. Looking at the damage. After all, Kirishima was sunk by surprise 16-inch shell fire, which was apparent on the second visit to the wreck. That said, Kirishima isn't the wreck we'll be looking at today. Today's video will look at the wreck identified as Hiei, based on the damage the respective ships took. First, as always, a little background. Hiei's final battle came as part of the general brawling off the coast of Guadalcanal. These back-and-forth actions had seen both Allied and Japanese losses, the severity of which depends on which battle you're looking at. For example, the Battle of Savo Island saw no fewer than four Allied cruisers lost in a single night. No matter which side came out worse, though, all of these were basically barroom brawls on the high seas. The battle Hiei sailed into on November 13th, 1942, would be no different. That was the naval battle of Guadalcanal. In this action, the battleship came into close contact with an American cruiser and destroyer force. She would, in the resulting battle, be the focus of most of the American fire, featuring such exciting moments as USS Laffey declaring, Get closer, I want to shoot my crew's pistols at that battleship. Joking aside, between Laffey's close encounter and being the focus of most other American ships, Hiei was savaged in this battle. Her superstructure was riddled by 5-inch shells, and the warship became a raging bonfire. While exact numbers are hard to say for sure, an estimate I've seen is over 80 shells hitting the ship, including shells that disabled her steering gear, as well as multiple torpedo hits. A modern battleship would have issues with that kind of damage. Hiei was an old battlecruiser at her core. It should not be surprising that the ship was crippled. Follow-up air attacks put more torpedoes and bombs into the already battered ship. In the end, Hiei was abandoned and scuttled by escorting destroyers on the evening of November 13th. 188 of her crew went down with the ship, the first battleship lost by Japan during the war. The wreck was, at that point, largely forgotten. Until, that is, the 1990s. 1992, in specific. That year, Robert Ballard, of Titanic and Bismarck fame, did an expedition exploring Iron Bottom Sound. This found quite a few ships, including Kirishima. It did not, however, find Hiei. Although, even at the time, there was some debate on if the wreck it did find was Kirishima or Hiei. Confirmation on that would have to wait until 2019. In that year, RV Petrol performed one of their many expeditions, this time to Iron Bottom Sound. While they surveyed the wreck Ballard found in January, it wouldn't be until February 6th that the discovery of Hiei was announced, at a depth of 900 meters, just shy of a kilometer and only four nautical miles away from Kirishima, as it turned out. The identification of the ship came down to one simple fact. The wreck Ballard found, and Petrol took a second look at, had very visible 16-inch shell holes. That was clearly Kirishima, which meant that the second Congo wreck had to be Hiei by process of elimination. With that out of the way, then, let's look at the wreck itself. I'm afraid this won't be the most exciting of shipwreck videos, because the wreck is capsized, and most of the fun details are lost to time. That's not to say there aren't interesting bits, like the sonar here. There are a couple angles to look at, from very far out to much closer in. The first one here serves mostly to demonstrate how far the debris field stretches from the main hull, or rather, what's left of the main hull. A very large portion of the ship was ripped off as she sank. 
the remaining section, as seen in the second image, is around 150 meters, or 492-ish feet, long. Or so Petrel estimated it, in any event. For reference, the ship was 222 meters, 728 feet long, when she was intact. This picture, comparing Hiei and Kirishima's wrecks, demonstrates how short Hiei's remaining stern really is. This isn't a clean break, either. The fourth image shows it in clear detail. Hiei ripped her bow off as she sank. While this doesn't rule out a magazine detonation, it does look more like the ship tore herself apart. That diagonal tear is not pretty. The first of the hull pictures speaks further to this point. Here you have the break where the bow tore away. It's torn and twisted up, with the bilge keel crumpled. The fact we can see that at all shows how far back this is. The bilge keel is towards the amidships portion of the ship. This particular shot is the starboard side of the break, though I imagine the port side wouldn't be much prettier. Although it should be noted that there is more of the ship left on the port. The next two images are both of the same shot, just from different angles. In this case, a box of 25mm anti-aircraft shells that came to rest atop Hiei's inverted hull. This isn't a terribly impressive shot in its own right, but it is an interesting one, both for the remarkably intact shells themselves and for the way this demonstrates how debris can fall from a wreck. Even with a relatively violent sinking, some of Hiei's internals drifted down, basically straight to the bottom. You wouldn't expect to see something landing on top of a ship like this, in most cases. Moving on, though, the next two pictures are of the side of the hull. These are interesting for a couple of reasons themselves. First, for the rust pattern. As could be expected of a relatively shallow wreck, especially a Japanese one, the ship is covered in rust. There's not going to be visible paint here, like on Hornet or Indianapolis. Instead, we get rust-red metal poking out from beneath a curtain of rusticles. For all of the corrosion, though, the hull is in decent enough shape. No major damage to see here. In fact, there are two clearly intact portholes. Wherever this is on the ship, it wasn't damaged too badly, either in the battle or the sinking. However, there is visible damage on another part of the hull a gaping gash in the side that stands in stark contrast to the mostly intact hole around it. It's difficult to say exactly what kind of damage this is, though it likely began as a shell hole. Beside it, you have another intact porthole and some damaged degaussing wire. I believe that the rim above it is the top edge of Hiei's torpedo bulge. That said, you've probably noticed something. A theme of these images coming in pairs. The same holds true as we look at the only weapons that Petrol photographed. These are Hiei's dual 12.7 cm secondary guns. 5 inch guns for the Americans in the audience. Hiei carried four of these mounts around her superstructure. These seem to be two different mounts, judging from the extra debris in the first picture. I can't make out what it is but it's missing in the second image. Either way, these mounts are the only weaponry photographed off Hiei. Her main battery turrets are either buried in the bottom, in the case of the stern mounts, or lost with the bow. And if any of the 25mm guns fell away, they weren't found. Or, at least, I haven't found pictures of them. As for the next set of pictures, those come from the superstructure. This was torn up as he a broke, leading to bits and pieces scattering around the debris field. This particular set is a base of some kind, either the base of a rangefinder or a searchlight. Regardless of what it is, this debris came to rest about 500 meters from the rest of the ship. That's in the main debris field, which likely includes more parts of the superstructure. Like, for example, this next bit. This is also a base of some form, complete with wiring. However, without much in the way of context clues, I'm not sure exactly what it was for. 
It is still an interesting picture, however. With that done, though, we're on to the last three pictures, all of which are of the extreme stern of the ship, where her shafts and rudders are located. First, we have the shafts and propellers, or screws depending on how you name them, themselves. These are intact, but one of the shafts seems to have slipped down. As this picture of her sister ship in dry dock demonstrates, that should be nowhere near as far aft as it is. Plus, the uncovered shaft shouldn't be, well, uncovered at all. The next image, meanwhile, moves further aft. Here we have Hiei's rudders, which are pressed up against each other. They're jammed hard to starboard, which is the reason the ship circled helplessly after her steering gear was hit. The interesting thing about these, however, is that the rudders on Kirishima are almost identical. As this picture demonstrates, both ships had their rudders jammed in the same manner. There's only very minor differences in this specific damage. That's a fascinating coincidence to end this video on. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.